Testing, testing, testing. Hello everyone, testing, testing. We'll get started in about six minutes. Hello everyone. I know many of you are on the East Coast, but we do have some West Coast and I think we even have some people um, from uh, Europe, Middle East uh, joining us. So uh, let us know how, how your day is going by a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I can recognize several of you from other sessions and even from last Saturday's um, math session. Uh, if you have incorporated any strategies into your class while we wait, I'd love for you to, you know, you turn on your microphone, tell us about them or write in the chat box, but I'd love to hear a little bit about what you've been doing. Dr. Willis, can we find your uh, last Saturday session uh, somewhere? Yes, it's on slide eight. All okay. the sessions I've done, any recordings I have, any blank slideshows or completed slideshows, I put them in the gray slides. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, since you are on the call right now, have you ever done anything on Edmonton? 
Um, is that another piece of software? If you can spell it out for me, maybe I can uh, look it up, but I don't, it doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, so we've been told that there will be um, some learning that we will be doing via Admentum. We were just told yesterday, so I was just wondering if you've ever, um, you know, have done anything. That one's new to me. There's so many new things. I know, <laughs> we're, we're exploring. <laughs> What you might find, though, is that other folks in these sessions might use similar softwares. I know one um, county near us is using Canvas. I am completely unfamiliar with Canvas, but I already have um, a couple names of people who um, have reached out to me, letting me know that they feel really confident in it and I can share their information with others. So we can network in that way. Okay. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're coming from. This is Teresa Wells and I am here today uh, with all of you to do Mather Days. Um, this is Synchronous Online Teaching Strategies for Educators and I am here to share what I do on a regular basis with everyone else. Um, today what you're going to see is how I implement the five practices, that's uh, Smith and Stein's work, um, in a math task. You're going to find that the majority of your time is spent in small groups working on the task together. Um, and so that's one of the things I'm modeling. And then in the end I'll model selecting, uh, sequencing, and connecting where I'll specifically select some student work to be shared out and we'll make connections um, amongst those. Alrighty. Um, if you would join me on slide two, I've uh, had some people interested in this. Uh, I work in the math specialist program at George Mason University. Uh, this is how a lot of our classes are run. If you're interested in becoming a math specialist, uh, check us out there. And on slide three, Again, I'm going to keep posting the link to the slide in the chat box for newcomers, but you don't need to click on it if you're already there. On slide three, these are comments from students who have taken uh, the online courses through Mason. Uh, mostly, I wanted to tell you all that this is not theoretical. This has been done, um, and these are actual responses, so you can rest assured that if you have questions, um, this has actually been in practice. And then we have the gray slides. These are just kind of information for you all. The grade slides on slide four through eight are a compilation of videos of frequently asked questions, blank slideshows from different sessions, recordings from different sessions, completed slideshows. Basically, if I've done it in a PD, I've tried to record it so other people can use it. They will always be here for you, so you're welcome to come back at any time and get those. And if you would, join me on slide either 9 or 10. Um, the ones that say math are math related, the ones that are don't say math are general. On slide 9 or 10, if you would please take over one of those little teeny tiny chat boxes, type in a number that would fall on the number line between 3 and 5, and then move it to that location. And please get creative. You can make your text box larger if you need to. Again, please get creative. Hello, if you're just joining us, uh, we are on slides 9 and 10. We're getting creative with different types of numbers that could fall in this number line.
some of you are already uh, thinking, uh, you know, about how you can use this in your classroom. Um, before we continue, I'd like to point out one of my favorite uh, classroom management tools, and that is on the very last slide. So if you go way, 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 way down there. As a way of respecting everyone's time, if you have questions, um, I'd love to answer them at the very end. Just grab a text box, put it on here. This is the virtual parking lot. You can ask your question um, whenever it comes to you. I'll try to answer them when I have a little bit of free time, and then I will address all of them by the end of the session. So. If you don't have any questions, you can come join me again on slide eight and nine. Take a look at some of the different um, ways that people put a number on the number line. One thing I enjoy doing is having students uh, take attendance this way. So they write their name and a number. Um, and it's a nice way for me to see how are they thinking. So in third grade, if they are putting up decimals, like I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. Um, in seventh grade, if they're putting 3.5, I don't know what they know, but I know that at least they know that 3.5. Um, so those are some strategies I use just to kind of touch base with um, students and where they are. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's dive into some deep math. On slide 11. I like to put out the reasons why do we do rich tasks. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics in their Principles to Action book um, said that for students to be successful in mathematics, we need to incorporate these eight teaching practices. We need goals that focus on learning. We need problem solving. We need to connect the different representations. We need discourse. We need purposeful questions, conceptual understanding. We need productive struggle. And we need to use student thinking instead of our own. So these are things that I plan to model today. And on slide 12 is your challenge. When you're solving this math problem today, please think of many different representations that you could use. Be patient with yourself as you're learning the technology, but once you have one representation down, please use the rest of the time to keep coming up with more. I'm looking, by the way, for about 26 different representations of this problem. I think everyone is muted. Is it me that's having feedback? I'll check my mic in just a minute. Um, so you're going to try and come up with lots of different uh, representations. On slide 13 is the problem solving oath that I ask my student to say out loud. If they're in my classroom, obviously, if you're from a distance, maybe you'll just read it. But take a minute and read this. And this is the oath that I ask you to make today. Ready, move to slide 14. Hi, Teresa. Yes. Yeah, this is Freema. Uh, are all the slides blank? Because all my slides are blank. If they are all blank, you probably just need to refresh your slides, um, close down your oh, browser, okay. and click on this link again, and then you, you should be able to see it. Oh, OK. Thank you. Sure thing. All right, slide 14 is our breakout room activity slide. This is where I plan out what it is that I want you all to do, the size of the groups, the time spent on it, and in the directions there are uh, the same directions I give my students. Um, keep trying to solve for multiple representations. There's lots of room on your slide, and if you find you need more room, just add a new slide to it. Um, but definitely lots and lots and lots of representations. And check out slide 15. This is our problem today. I know many of you uh, stopped your instruction right around the algebra um, unit. And so um, this time, again, I did algebra. I'll bring up PropStat and some other topics in the next Saturdays. So it says a space station starts out as only one module orbiting the Earth. 
The plans are to increase the station by adding two stations at a time to maintain the stability of their orbit. The stations are added in an upside down V shape. On stage two and stage three. The questions here, and you can do these in any order, um, what is stage four? And what is stage 10 and stage 100? put you all in breakout rooms. Toggle over to collaborate. Figure out what group you're in, and I'll be there to support you. Turn on your microphone, introduce yourself to the group, and start solving the problem in all the ways you can think of. I'm going to set up breakout rooms now. We'll start. Morning. Hello, everyone. You're on slide 16. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Let's slide oh, 17. Got it. I got it. 17, yeah. So we're supposed to draw. Loudoun County. Hello, group three. You're on slide 18. The fourth one over from the pointers is shapes. Where is it? There we go. Okay, so here we go. Oh, and it's huge. I think the idea is to uh, come up with some sort of representation of how we want to solve the problem, right? Yeah. answer right so question one is draw stage four how many stations are on stage four so yes i agree that stage four would be seven because it looks like it's increasing by two each time mm -hmm. hey group seven just a heads up you are on slide 22 it looks like some of you are already there you're on slide 22 okay So I was teaching this to my um, sixth graders. Um, I would expect them to know um, unit rates. And I looked at this as a unit rate problem, or unit rate in proportions. And that's the lessons that we left off from. So I would expect them to set up a ratio table in order to complete this assignment. Anyone else have something to share? I'm writing okay. on slide eight. Um, so I would want them to draw it, right, to draw each stage and think about what they're noticing recursively from one stage to the next. Mm -hmm. Think about if they can notice a general pattern from there. Okay. So look for patterns. 
Yeah, I think the first thing that I was trying to do as I thinking as a learner um, was trying to find those patterns. What was what's going on from stage one to stage two? Okay. Hi there, group eight. I just wanted to touch base with you all, let you know you're on slide 23, but it looks like you're already putting your names there. And perfect. Keep on thinking. So how are we thinking about stage four and stage 10? Uh, stage four would be what, seven? Because it's increasing by two each stage. So increasing by two each stage, that's nice. Uh -huh. We could also draw it. Yeah. Yep, yeah, continue the draw. How are um, we noticing then? How can we use that information to get to stage 10? The number of rows corresponds to what stage you're on. Hmm. I didn't do shape, shape. I think it was call outs. Call outs. Okay. Oh, I see. So under okay. the shape and then call outs and then that guy. Yeah. How's it going, Drew? I don't use yeah. I don't use this software very often, so because I don't create slides. So I yeah, just use neither, it. Right? I'm pretty familiar with slides just because I don't know. You use them. <laughs> Millennial yeah. I get. Yeah. <laughs> um so what were we supposed to do for stage I noticed that you have a formula or an equation or expression here that you of them. And what I wonder is, size the picture differently? Size it exactly the same? Like if you were to put those numbers into action, do they all mean the same? Hmm. I just looked at the pattern of numbers and <coughs> came up with the two n minus one. I don't know, Tim. Tim, you did the other one, right? The yeah. one plus. Yeah, what, I think I was visualize? looking at it then. when when you teach when you teach um was, is that a number or two thing that I taught at one point? It was with regards yeah. to um, when you talk about sequence series. series and you start trying mm -hmm. to look at what's happening and mm -hmm. you dial it back one by n minus one. That's sort of where I went with that. Mm-hmm. Probably the lack of there being two in the first row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like every row has two that's being added. So it would just be two N for each row, but the first row only has one circle. So right. that's the subtracting one. Um, and then if you start one, all of a sudden we're now we're minusing two. How is that even possible? First you tell me I'm minusing one, now I'm minusing two. Like the math is getting a little crazy, right? But you can color represent what's happening there. By the way, I'm gonna come to your question. So I'm trying to do a drawing here that shows that, like, there's all these pairs. Ah, and then there's going to be that one left over. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about? So what if we had, like, a red one to represent the negative, the minus? Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Like, we don't want this one. <laughs> The fact that we're showing the adding twos. That mm -hmm. like this would be two n, but we don't have this one, so we have to subtract the one. Right. Because the first row is just the one right there. I think that makes sense.
What did she say? This is algebra one level. I think this is algebra two. This is sequences and series. Yeah. Well, if you're getting into the formulas, I mean, like, yeah, I think patterns and stuff is probably in seventh or eighth grade math, but I don't know. Us using the formulas is for sure algebra two. It's something we haven't done yet <laughs> in algebra two, so I kind of like this. I'm like, oh, how can I teach this virtually? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we drew stage four. We got ten. So how many ten? Would, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask. So then we didn't officially write how many. We have a table. Do we agree that ten would be? We got nineteen. in the wrong group. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to manage so many different things. Um, yes, my question for you all is your two formulas. Um, you have two things at the top, and I'm just curious how they might look different if you were to color code your model to look like those two formulas. Okay. Yes. Yeah, will you help me, Tom? I'm not sure. very smart. Okay. So I thought it would be fun to do um, summation notation, but obviously we don't want to add them all up. That's not what I'm trying to do. So tell me why this is such a bad idea. Like, what am I trying to do right now? I think you might do n minus one plus n minus one in parentheses and plus two outside parentheses. Yeah, but that's not going to help me. It's just going to add them all up. So what do I need that for, right? I, I, I thought that was just one way you wanted to try it. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. I think I mind. Okay. I'm flexible. I thought it was going to be interesting, but no. <coughs> well, okay, so I'll just graph the line. Or I'll make a table. Yes, my sweet angel. How did this before only took five years to build? So what are my flowers? Change the the equal to a tilde. So what? Uh, and this is great. Noticing that it's increasing by 2, they would probably take and say, oh, if I multiply 10 by, um, by 2 and then subtract the 1. So that 2 times 10 would be 200 minus 1 would give them 199. Oh. 
Well, she gave us a long time for this session. Yeah, there's 16 minutes left. Yeah. Let's see. Try making a mistake, misconception. Slide 14 with the, the breakout rhythm activity instructions. Mm -hmm. Says, uh, step eight says try making a mistake or a misconception. Where's our slide? We're way down at, oh, slide 23. Okay. You know, one misconception is that they don't subtract that one, you know, and I've had students do that. They, they figure the pattern out, and then they don't go back to subtract. So they're like, oh, there's two per stage. Right, right. So when they get to, to uh, stage 100, it would be 200, and that's what they would end with. Because they know that every stage is increasing by two, but they don't go up back and figure out that at stage one, they only had one. Right. So a mistake would be not subtracting. I'm wondering about how people's need to use Google Slides is impacting what they can think about mathematically. But they're being very creative with how they're using Google Slides, so maybe it's not mattering. Because in my class that I held last week, I used Google Slides like this, and I had students upload pictures of their work and then compare and contrast. But I'm seeing people are using all kinds of other, like they didn't think to do that. I'm the only one that thought to do that. Oh, on the, the other groups? Yeah. But my students seemed pretty fluent with oh, interesting. pictures of their work. But I also teach adults, so it's different. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm setting up her taking pictures of everybody's work. So when I try to figure this out, at least I will have a picture. Yeah, she lets us have access to the slides after as well. So you can think about it. Oh, like good. That. And right, like we were saying how she's allowing a lot of time. I think I didn't allow very much enough time in the groups last time. So then it's like you do fewer problems that do them well. Now this was, a, we were told by our uh, tech person not to use the breakout groups for our, <laughs> you know, sixth graders because it could run into a lot of trouble. And so I'm looking at these great assignments that she's doing with breakout groups. And I'm going, I cannot trust my sixth graders to carry out the activity and not play around. So I'm like torn. This is a great <laughs> activity, but I may well, not be able to use it. What if you try it and just see how it goes? Uh, yeah, if I could, if and, and this is literally not allowed. Well, they did not recommend. Right now, the county is not saying that we should. Yeah, I'm advising against it because of uh, by this being brand new, they don't know what the kids will do because they're saying kids will be kids, and you know the breakout groups may not go the way I intended them to because they may be playing around. Yeah, but but they. Could you have, I know time is kind of short, but could you have a session where they do just play around on it? I could. Yeah. I could play around with it, yeah. Yeah, and maybe, like, just see how it goes. Like, how bad is it in what ways and how good could it be? I don't know. I, because in when I do the large group Zoom meetings, they're just so much more boring. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> this is all brand new to us. I'm going. And oh, we, sure. Me too. And we had a week to learn all of this. And so that's so overwhelming. Yes, yes, yes. Are you healthy? Is everybody you know staying healthy so far? 
Yeah, so far. Uh, we only exactly. had one school, one county, Loudoun County, that had two people to die from the uh, virus. Oh, oh no. Um, um, but none, and but no one in Fairfax County. So how much time do you think you would give your students to do this? Because 20 minutes feels like really way well. too long. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I would say, I'm sorry. I would say start with 10 and then do it? like a five to see who needs more. And yes, I think it depends on the, the students you work with. Like I would not give a problem like this to my to my sped kids. They wouldn't be able mm -hmm. to do it. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to, mm -hmm. um, cut it down in some fashion. Um, so I think it depends on the group, but I would say 10 to start with and then add a couple. If this, if if the majority of the group isn't done, then add a few more minutes. But mm -hmm. Hi there, team. Well, in our elementary It looks like school, you all have well, quite a few representations yeah. on your slide. Um, I'm curious, did you start to look at the other student representation starting on slide 33? No, we haven't yet. All right, take a look at those and see if you can um, understand, first of all, like what the student's doing, but also um, what misconceptions he, that student might have or where the next steps would be. Okay. So we're supposed to be on 33 right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, Evan's adding one instead of subtracting one each time. And Jared's adding two. So station, stage, station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they missed one step with the tracking part. They they stopped at adding and didn't go for it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Double this minus one. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of pictorial representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I immediately went to was the pictorial. Mm. <laughs> I like the double this minus one. Like I, I see a lot of students. Yeah. I thought there was something you said that she said. I don't know. I thought I saw a little thing that came across like, are you almost done or something like that? Hi, folks. I just popped in your group and I heard that question. Uh, yes, if your group oh. <laughs> has um, thought of lots of representations, remember, I'm actually on the hunt here for 26 different things that I anticipated. And you right. come up with misconceptions and you feel like you're, you're kind of in this feeling of finished, uh, check out the student work starting on slide 33 and see if you all can make sense of those. Say that again? Slide, slide 30? 33. 33. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I keep zooming. Mm, okay. So, so Evan is off because he didn't take it into account that first. 
Right. He thinks he, you need to add it. Like he's finding the next row. Yeah. He's finding the, the N plus one th as opposed to the N nine, the N row. Well, he's where, finding where, guys, where are you looking? Where are you guys looking? Slide 33. Slide 33. Oh dear. Okay. I'm way behind. 33. Yeah. She just came over and said that. I, I couldn't hear what she was saying. So I'm glad someone's I, a little garbled for me. Okay. 33. Yeah, Evan, to me, Evan just found the 101st row. Yeah, he has, he has two N plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I think that's kind of a common, like, mm -hmm. misconception, I guess. Like, you're thinking, oh, like, I would start at every row mm -hmm. has two, and then there's another one there that doesn't have two. So, like, they don't, you know, he's not thinking about finding, like, labeling each row with which row it is, I suppose. Yeah, that's what, you know, we do, we, we label n, n equals one, two, three, and then put the term under it and try to find the pattern. Right. And then Jared's table is perfect, but it's like, how'd you get that, bud? <laughs> how'd you jump from yeah, that? Yeah, it doesn't match his work, right? <laughs> right. The work on one side doesn't match the other, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be an opportunity to introduce recursive because you know there's some kid that's going to make a chart that shows everything from one to a hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think once Jerry got the um, stage ten, knowing that was nineteen, he could just multiply. Well, he didn't multiply by ten, but. Yeah, he probably figured out the 2n minus 1, like thinking, right. oh, 19 is really just 20 right. minus 1. And Our math really liked the Desmos um, that we, we've kind of been put together for them. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, like it's all at one place, they're just changing the screen and we can provide them feedback. So they enjoy it and we can embed video and, you know, we can do all sorts of stuff there. Is, um, is that a new feature in Desmos to pro, like provide some written feedback? No, it is, I think it is all. At this point, uh, everyone can't hear me because I'm in the main room completely by myself. And I'm at the point now where I have been a little bit like an air traffic controller these last few minutes. I'm figuring out which students present, what parts of their presentation I want them to go over, and the order of them. Going back to Smiths and Stein's five practices, that's our selecting and sequencing. And then I also put down specific questions I want to ask to connect these representations. So my math talk today, I really want to focus on that there are different ways of writing equations and they can also be equal. But that's a really weird concept for, uh, for kiddos to understand. Sometimes we're doing something and then we're going to plus one. Sometimes we're doing something and then we're going to minus one. The students in this class did lots of different representations that show plus one and minus one. And I want in the end for us to be able to see uh, the big connection that slide 17 puts so nicely, that there are lots of ways of writing expressions that are all equal. Um, and we can see the equality in the different models and that can support us as students to understand equality in symbolic notation. So that's my overall math goal and that's what I'm gonna attempt to do in the next 20 minutes. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to the main room. Hello, hello, and welcome back, everyone. We are here in the main room. 
I'm going to be muting your microphones. You can help me out uh, and do it as well. Welcome back, everyone. All righty. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that uh, what I'm going to do is model the five practices. While your groups were talking, I was in your breakout rooms, asking you other questions, probing you to think differently. And I was actually jotting down the representations that I want to showcase in this math talk here. Um, I've sequenced them in order of uh, presentations. And when I get to your slide, I'll ask that you, um, if you're going to talk about it, just the section with the arrow. And we're going to start up on slide 17. So if we can all move to slide 17. Group two uh, has the basis of what we're going to be talking about in our math talk. On slide 17, I'll just keep writing them in the chat box in case you um, are off that. On slide 17, they said that we can solve this uh, problem using three different expressions. And I don't know about you all, but if my students saw that there's three correct answers for this, they're like, how can that be? How can sometimes I times two? Sometimes I minus two and sometimes I minus one. Like this is not right. And so that's what we're going to kind of look at today. Uh, the next one is um, the slide below it, slide 18. Now the slide 18. And this group has a little yellow arrow pointing uh, to their model on slide 18. Did you mean group three? I do mean group three. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so the le yellow arrow is pointing to the, the where you notice how the pattern repeats when we get to stage four there. You can see the yellow arrow is pointing to where that the piece is duplicated. So stage four has um, four pieces going up each side, but it's duplicated at that top. So it's pointing there. So that's like subtract like the minus one that's beside there is suggesting that you're taking away one because um, it's used twice. That we use it twice and we take one away. Um, group five had a similar representation. Five twenty. Can you explain um, what is happening at the uh, middle? Yeah, so on our group, we were thinking about it as it's almost getting to that eight first and then taking away the one. So it's, it's similar to the other group. You have four on each side, but you have the four and then you show one of them being taken away. Um, sure. Can you hear me? 
Great. So if you look at where the red arrow is for Sage 4, it's like there are two different legs with three dots in it with one dot at the top. So those that one leg with three dots, three is one less, one fewer than the stage number of four. So we could then see that as one less than the stage number, two sets of those, then add in one for the top one. Sorry, I didn't hear the end of what you said. So on the left side of slide 23, they had 2 n minus 1 and then plus 1. But when you simplify that, when they distributed their 2, well, they didn't show that step. Maybe that's what you're meaning. <laughs> so you'd have 2n minus 2 plus 1. And then when they simplify it, they have 2n minus 1. They wrote stage number instead of 2.
Uh, hey, Teresa, that was me. Um, I was thinking that with the pattern standard in grade two, this could be something where students are just like noticing and wondering what's happening with the growing and recognizing that what the next, what it'll continue, how it will continue to grow. So that's um, how I was seeing it versus a lot of kids before that have seen repeating patterns. So I thought this would be an interesting way to um, experience and be exposed to growing patterns. Um, I wrote that, and I can't quote the standard right off the top of my head, but it just occurred to me that some kids, they love to work vertically, and so they're just going to say, oh, the Y value is increasing by two, increasing by two, increasing by two, and I just saw it as an opportunity to, to think about phrase, framing the patterns in a recursive way.
Yeah, I didn't write the um, Hall of Mirrors comment, but I'm wondering if it's referring to sometimes when you share your screen or application, you get, a, it literally looks like, a, you know, all these different versions will kind of shrunk of your screen. Maybe that's what they were asking. Are you going to have more math-specific classes, Teresa? Okay, is there a link to sign up for those? Because the link to sign up is for your other class. Are the math classes always at the same time? Thank you. Is it okay to take the part two of the strategies for any subject before you take part one? Okay, perfect. Thank you.